Howdy folks and welcome to Bagel Dog DIY. I'm your host Ben, hanging out watching it rain today, editing some videos, Bagel Dog's on the couch sleeping next to me. Today we're going to be working on some picture rail, some copper picture rail to be exact. There's lots of different ways to do picture rail. There's lots of companies that sell picture rail. There's companies that sell picture rail for like museums. It's like extruded aluminum with their own little proprietary cable hooks that go in it. Um, there's companies like modern design companies that sell picture rail, you know, restoration hardware, things like that. And not trying to get down any of those companies, but usually for like a 10 foot run, they want three or four hundred dollars. And that's just ridiculous. So I'm going to show you today how to make some picture rail, how to some simple half inch copper tubing you can pick up from any hardware store and some copper standoffs. And then I just use cable and cable crimps. Um, this is a, a method of hanging sculpture that I learned in my undergrad degree a long time ago. And it served me well. It's maybe a little bit of a pain if you know, you're going to move your paintings around a lot but I think it works out really well in the end. And if you don't know what picture rail is, it's just a rail. It usually goes around the top of the room. It can be made out of wood. It can be made out of metal. There's different types of molding and trim. Um, and then it takes a hook, and some of the hooks are metal, some are wood. You can use cloth coming down from them, anything you want. But essentially, it's a way to hang pictures or sculpture and not put a bunch of holes in your wall. Um, I am an artist. I have a lot of friends that are artists. I have a large art collection because of that. Um, so... I have tall ceilings in this house. The plan is to hang a lot of art in here, and I want to be able to move it, keep it modular, and not have to patch holes all the time or have really ugly holes in my walls. So picture rail is the way to do that. The first thing you're going to want to do is measure your walls, the length of the picture rail you're going to do, and go out and buy some copper. The copper I'm using, like I said, it's half-inch red plumbing copper. So it is $14 for a 10-foot stick where I'm located. That's pretty cheap in my book. Um, and then you're going to need to get standoffs. I use Bell Copper Standoffs. The Bell Copper Standoffs are actually $1.47 each, um, but you only need four for a 10-foot run. So you're not really going to be spending that much money on copper or standoffs. The next thing you're going to want to buy is this copper cable and crimp. I bought it on Amazon. I got 500 feet of this eighth-inch cable, and it came with 50 crimps, and it was $11.97. And then I bought a $9 pair of these crimping pliers that had a cutter built into them so I could cut the wire as well. Now, as you can see, I'm going to put some images up of it finished. I have started hanging art on it. I have started hanging sculpture on it. It's super strong. It's stable. It's not going anywhere. You are going to put the copper standoffs, the bell standoffs, right into studs. So this can support some weight. I will say that if you're going to hang a lot of weight from it, you are going to want to hit every stud because the copper itself will bow, and that's going to look kind of funny. It'll sag between um, between your bell standoffs, but that'll make more sense as we get going. So the first thing you're going to want to do is measure the area where you're going to actually put your copper. You can see me doing that here, and then you're going to need a way to cut the copper. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. I think the easiest way is just with one of these rolling cutters or pipe cutters, tubing cutters, whatever you want to call them. The way they work is it's just a steel disc and then there's two wheels opposite it. So you open up the jaws, you slide it down on the copper, and you tighten the jaws on your mark. Uh, you spin the tool around a couple rotations around the copper, and then you crank down the handle on the end. Then you spin it a couple more rotations and crank down the handle on the end. Spin it a couple more rotations, crank down the handle on the end, and eventually it forces that cutting wheel right through your material and it breaks off. Be careful, the ends of your pipe will be super sharp after doing this. You could use a deburring tool. I'm not going to. It's going to be way up in the air. Nobody's ever going to touch it. Just be careful when you're handling the tubing as you're installing it. So I got my measurements. I got my tubing cut. The next thing I want to do is measure down from either my ceiling or I'm working on a piece in this video that's underneath this windowsill. I know under the windowsill I want to come down two inches, um, and because the sheetrock was done so badly in this house, I can actually see my nails, so I know right exactly where my studs are. So I come down two inches, and I make a little mark with just the tip of the screw, um, and then I drive it right into the stud. I, want, I do want to make sure that the bell standoffs, um, that the arm on them is pretty straight up and down, so that when I put my copper on the wall, all the standoffs line right up. So I get that drilled in there, and then I just work my way down the wall, drilling all three of them in to support this piece of copper.
once all of them are in, I go get my piece of copper, I start in the center one, line it up left to right, flip over the little hasp on top of the copper and tighten down both screws. Then I go to either end and do the same thing. And it's literally as simple as that. It's up. Now you can hang pictures from it to your heart's content. In the rest of the video, I'm going to show you some fast motion. I'll try not to speed it up too much. I don't want it to look horrible, but have me installing the copper rail up top of the ceiling here. For that, I actually used a laser. Um, I just have one of these little Bosch laser levels. I think it was about 150 bucks. Uh, I've had it for years. I don't know what the price is of them now. I've had it for, I don't know, probably 10 years. If you're going to do any sort of hanging, though, any sort of like moving pictures around, or even I use this when I built the privacy fence on it. Once you have a laser like this, you're just going to use it all the time. It's something that I would recommend getting. It makes just hanging pictures, hanging anything, just a super, super easy leveling cabinets, leveling any anything. Um, it's just, yeah, it's a tool I, I didn't really know about. And five or six years ago, I was working for a shop, and uh, the boss there swore by him. Uh, and this isn't a transit laser. This is not a laser that you'd set up like in the, in the center of a room, and it casts, a, you know, it's a laser you can set up. I usually it has a magnetic holder for it. You can put it on a pole. You can just drive a screw into the wall. And then you can adjust it up and down with a little micro adjustment from there. But So anyway, for doing the copper around the top of the room, I came down six inches. Because I might do some crown molding in this room. I haven't decided. So I wanted to leave myself four inches or so for that. Um, and still be able to get my copper up there for my picture rail. Uh, so I'm just going to show you, you know, the video will quickly kind of go over it. It'll be in fast motion. But... And just me setting up the laser, going up and down the ladder, shooting that six inch line across the room. And it's the same process. I'm going to hit studs. I get the stud finder out. I couldn't, I couldn't see the nails up there. So I had to get the stud finder out and you're just going to put the screws right into the studs. Um, and then you're going to go, you're going to get your piece of copper. You're going to cut it to fit and you're going to go back and screw it on. So really a simple, straightforward process. Um, hanging is also really straightforward on this. What I do, like I said, is I use a continuous piece of cable through the back of the painting. So on the back of each one of these paintings, there are two of those D hooks, one on each side. And I'll take the cable, I'll put it through those two D hooks. I usually actually just leave the painting on the ground. I just run the cable through, climb up my ladder. I do one end of cable around the copper. And then I pull the cable from the ground while I'm up on the ladder pull the painting up the wall to the light, the, the level that I want it, and then I cut off the cable. And that way I don't have a ton of wasted cable. I'm up there on my ladder, the painting's where you want it. I can put the, the cable over the copper, cut it, and then you just have one crimp that you have to do while you're on your ladder, and that's going to secure it. Then you can get off and actually level it. Because the cable just runs through the two D hooks, you know, the painting can be leveled either way. Um, left or right and you can move it within within reason left or right um, you are limited by where it actually sits within the bell the bell attachments that you have on the wall if that makes any sense I think that's going to do it for today's video though it's just it's a quick one but it's one that I've had a lot of questions about a lot of people said uh, in my Instagram stories and things like that like oh the, your picture it looks so nice you must have spent a fortune on it it's copper it's really pretty um, also, you could polish this if you wanted. You know, you could take some sandpaper and you could uh, clean this copper up and make it all super shiny. I didn't do that. I kind of like the industrial look. I even left uh, this copper comes with, uh, there's some printing down the side of it to give you the specifications of it. All I do is I twist and turn that to the wall so you can't see it from the floor. Um, that hides it. But if you wanted to, that would sand right off. Again, just some, some light-duty sandpaper, and you could sand up and down these copper tubes fairly quickly if you want them to be really shiny and stand out and bright. Um, I kind of want the artwork to stand out. I also debated you could use copper crimps on the cable instead of aluminum crimps. Um, copper crimps actually hold less weight, but uh, I decided against it again because I wanted it to be about the artwork. And I kind of wanted the cables to disappear into the walls, which I think they do. So if this is something you're thinking about doing in your house, it's really simple. Make sure you hit studs. Make sure you know what's inside your wall. Don't be drilling into any plumbing or electrical or anything like that. Um, but other than that, it's fairly inexpensive. It's a quick project, and it can really change the look of your studio space or your house. 
Cheers. I hope you have a great day.